I, I'm a student of history, and I remember reading about the Ottoman Empire regularly castrated young boys in order to create a whole class of eunuchs to serve their operation. And I always thought, oh, what, how barbaric. You know, we're so enlightened now. Nobody today would think that it's a good idea to castrate anybody before puberty. And it's um, stunning to think that uh, these, uh, the, the, the lessons of history need to be relearned again and again, and barbar barbarism continues. Our next speaker is Gail Ruzica, who is our state leader in Utah and has been uh, stalwart on this issue in, uh, in bringing to light for many years now when we all said, well, wait a second, Gail, what are you talking about? We don't under even understand what the issue is and, and bringing it to our attention and continuing to work hard to lobby Utah and, and explain the dangers of this issue. Uh, she is, Gail is a, um, a mother of 12 and a grandmother of 43, do I have that right? 40. 46, grandmother of 46. So please welcome Gail Ruzica. Wrong PowerPoint. But yeah, we'll go back, back up, and we'll just start there, and we'll see what we, we'll see where it goes now. <laughs> so, you're talking about uh, intimidation. I, I now follow the doctor, brilliant doctor, the attorney, and me. So, <laughs> uh, but I do have 12 children. So, <laughs> means something. Uh, you know. Oh, I actually, if I'm going to time myself, I should start it. I got it. Oh, I'm just making sure you got it right. <laughs> uh, about six years ago, I uh, was going around the state of Utah with a very prominent uh, state senator, and we were doing presentations on religious liberty slash the problems that we were having uh, with the bathrooms and the dressing rooms and the showers and all those things and and we did over 50 meetings going these cottage meetings just going around the state i took him with me because he gave me all the credibility and uh, people were just shocked one of the things i heard often was oh my gosh Gail, why do you keep saying that you're just discrediting yourself there is no way that they're going to we're going to have girls and boys and men and women in showers together and so they would go down the list and talking about the sports, saying the same thing. Later, when all these things started happening, and I would point out, you know, I had documentation, but the documentation was in other states, as many of us go through, especially California. But uh, so then, you know, like for all of us, it came to our state. And when it came to our state, everybody was just, oh, and they were accepting it. I mean, it was astounding to me. I went from being a kook to now I was a kook for trying to stop it before just talking about it. But through all that, the interesting thing and the reason I bring this up is I was so concerned that I was driven. I came here, I talked to all of you about it. I spoke publicly here and, and other places trying to wake people up that this was coming. And I was very concerned for our children very concerned for our children. Um, but I was concerned for our children that were being pushed into this situation. I didn't even stop and think about, you know, the, the, ch the children that was demanding those bathrooms, those shared bathrooms and things. I wasn't even thinking about them. I was kind of upset with them and their families and, their, and, and the people that were doing this. And then, a little, well, actually less than two years ago, I started to, in all of my research, find Dr. Catella, and I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe what I found. I hadn't even been concerned for those children, and never since the first time that I learned of abortion had I been so shocked, so upset, worried about these little children, worried about these children who would never get to fulfill what they came to earth for. What is the first commandment? Multiply and replenish the earth. And adults were taking this away from these children. What happens when they're old enough to realize what God has sent them here to do? I was shocked, hurt, upset, everything I could think of. 
So I started doing all the research that I possibly could to find out what was going on, trying to get people to listen to me. Once again, there you go again, Gail. What are you doing telling them all these crazy things? You're just discrediting yourself. But as I started searching, I thought, would they be doing this in Utah? Nah, they wouldn't do this in Utah. So I started searching. And guess what? They're doing this in Utah. And this is where they're doing it, at the University of Utah, our medical school. That was even more shocking, because what kind of credibility does that give this? And have you ever tried to go after a university? Worst thing ever, especially if it's the medical school. Especially, well, you know, Utah was famous for the, the very first heart transplant, the complete, uh, you know, heart transplant. Uh, not, not, I guess I should say, this was the, um, the you know, the, the heart that wasn't really a heart, that, you know, it was a mechanical built heart, the kind that they transplanted. And, and uh, Dr. Barney Clark was the one who got this heart. And oh, Utah just loves to talk about the fact that we were the first ones to, to, to do that. So here I was, how am I gonna do anything about this? How am I going to expose this? But I thought, okay, I'm going to have to do that. And the first thing I can do is start telling everyone about it. People were shocked, they didn't believe it. But guess what? How did I find out they were doing it? They have a wonderful website. And I went to their website and there it was. Um, okay, wait a minute, is this it? Which button do I push? <laughs> okay. And uh, this is where I found all the information. And they were just generous with their information. They said that they offer a comprehensive clinic for transgender, non-binary, intersex, and non-conforming youth. And they went on to talk about, here's the doctors that do it. And look what they do, puberty blockers, gender uh, affirming hormones, behavioral health, on goes the list. There it was. So I fixed up this, this little PowerPoint and I went around the state. Uh, with my PowerPoint, first of all, explaining what, what this meant what, and, and uh, having all kinds of slides that showed that puberty, puberty blockers work on all the things and other people that were doing them. And, uh, and then taking them to the University of Utah website and showing them the information there. And, and I'm sure just some of you all tried to look that up I, I, you know, I've looked up other states just to see that's one of the first things I did, and you guys all have them too. It was, there they were as fast as I could look them up, I could find them. So how, how do you do that? Where do you get the help? Well, there it is. As I started going around talking to people, they were still in shock, so I called up Erin Brewer and I said, Erin, I need you, you need your help, you gotta come, come with me. So she did, we did a few of ours together and we've done a lot of them separately as we went out to educate the people about what was going on. But you know, that wasn't enough. What, we, what was I gonna do now? Well, as soon as I found out, the people were shocked. They were, I mean, we didn't go talk to anybody. Everybody in the room didn't gasp and shake their head in, in complete disbelief, uh, lack of understanding, couldn't believe that this was going on. But we had to get it stopped, didn't we? The next thing was to stop it. So I went to the governor. And I went in and I just had a file. I just took a file, I had papers. I didn't take my computer or anything. I just had papers that I handed him one at a time, showing him what his university was doing because he's the governor of the state and it's a state university. He was shocked. The first words out of his mouth is, oh my gosh, we can't let this happen. We need to do something. He was probably as naive as I was, but we both agreed that something needed to be done. And he said the first thing he was going to do was call the university. And then we talked about the need for legislation. He did call the university. Did something come of that? Well, yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> they, they said, hi, Governor. I mean, you know, they do listen to him. They do talk, to him, but they don't do what he says anymore. Because this is huge. These, these doctors that are doing this, um, yeah, let me see, make sure that, let me go back here and see. So, uh, the, the, yeah, let me see, okay, so, you know, they are, they are, these guys are so committed to this and so are determined to do this. But what the governor did do was talk to um, the, the vice president there, 
worked with him, well, I should say, probably talked to the president, but the vice president was the one that was assigned this. I've talked to him too. Now, did anything happen? Yes, something did happen. And that something is something really good, and I am, I am grateful for that, because if you look there, it says, when can I have surgery? And there's the list. You know, you know, before you can have the surgery, they want you to be taking the uh, hormones for at least 12 months to establish a relationship with a mental health therapist. And then it says that this helps the surgeons know that you are ready, that you're healthy, ready to do this. But here is one good thing that happened. They eliminated the surgery. If you look at the bottom now, the, the, if you go on their website, the, the slide I just showed you is no longer there. It's changed to say the same thing, but the last thing there was, are 18 years old. So at least just by going to the governor and him calling the university, we shut down the surgery. Was I happy? Well, after I got over being disappointed that that's all they did, I was happy. But then what do we do next? And uh, I, I wrote a, a piece about this and explained this whole thing, and we went, uh, got a booth at the Republican convention, and we passed out this one pager, only one pager, because that's all they'll read, and passed it to everybody who walked by. I talked to, if I saw a legislator, I made him stop and, and uh, look at it and talk to them about it, or uh, doctors or anybody else that I could get to be interested in, in this and what we were doing. And, uh, that made a difference. It started to get people's attention. So that then I was able to go to legislators. And these legislators had the same shock as the governor had had. And they had said, oh, yes, that they wanted to do something. So as I went through showing each of them what was going on, um, I guess I better. And, and they could see, see what was happening at the University of Utah. That was extremely helpful. And, uh, but then the next thing, and this is what I don't know what will come up here, is, uh, no, it's not there. The legislation, I don't know, I, somehow you got the wrong PowerPoint, but there, I do have a copy of the legislation, and um, I'm gonna go back. And, and so we, actually what we ended up using, and we have a sponsor now, and uh, we have had for, he filed the bill about two months ago, and use the language uh, from, from ADF. Uh, we looked at all the other languages, and this is the one that the, our ledger research, and especially the legislator himself liked, was the ADF language. So we now have the legislation. Uh, but what happens when, when this happens? You know, when, what happens when you take on something like this? Things start to happen, and in fact, I remember Dr. Cardella, Cardella was on my radio show, and she, as we talked before the radio show, she said, okay, these are the things we're gonna talk about. She says, but I wanna warn you what's gonna happen. What's gonna happen in your state, what's gonna happen to you, what's gonna happen to you, anybody else that gets involved in this. And she shared ideas and things that she, I mean, things that she knew was happening in other states. And I, I, I believed her, because we've watched this happen for ever and ever. <laughs> but then just this week, our legislative session just started this week, so we're just getting started with this because we just, it, it happened. Last week, the sponsor of our, of our bill, uh, this was the headlines. Sister of, of anti-trans Republican implores him to stop. Uh, families know uh, about their children and uh, explore him to, and she talked about uh, what is best for them, what is best for children. What did she say? Well, she wrote that uh, this anti-trans bill that would ban gender re related treatment for minors is facing calls to reconsider from, from the, his LGBT advocate sister, transgender brother-in-law and transgender niece. Now, he, I mean, he, did he know this? Yes. Had he told me? No, he didn't think this would happen. But it was an op-ed. It was an op-ed, unbelievable, in the largest newspaper in Utah. It popped up on my phone. I thought, what is this? I called him really quick. You know, Brad, what's going on? He says, what? He didn't know about it. He didn't know she had written this. His heart was broken. Later in the evening, he texted me to say, things are so bad here at my house tonight. His brothers, his sisters, his own children, all these people, you know, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna handle this? And, um, but you know what? His brothers and sisters said, we're with you, we support you. 
and they came and rallied around him, his children, his wife, everybody rallied around him. As he, but you can see there he is with the picture of his, wife, his sister. His sister has a nice picture. They made his look grim because uh, that's what that, our, the Tribune will do in our state. But it was unbelievable. And this is just the start. She, she has a transgender husband and a transgender daughter. Her husband is a woman and her daughter is a boy. And that, that was what her whole article was about. She also started quite some time ago an organization called Mama Dragons. And these are the mothers fighting for their children, fighting to see that their children have all of these wonderful advantages, that, that they can have the surgery, that they can be recognized, that they can be called what they want to be called. Who would have ever thought, when I asked him to be the one to carry that bill, that this is where this was headed? He never mentioned it. I didn't know, but she and she's just getting started. So this this will continue to go on. As you can see, the Tribune reported that Da is writing the draft legislation following a request by the conservative Eagle Forum, founded by the activist Phyllis Schlafly. That was the best thing they put in the article, and so I was I was really really grateful for that. So that's that's where we are. That's what's going on. Everybody, please do the same thing. Be prepared, this, you know, Satan is running the show for the, their side. God is running the show for our side. Satan is gonna rain down on you no matter what you do. And you know what? How often do you get to stand up and say, get behind me, Satan, and now's the time to do it. Thank you. Gail has brought up a copy of the booklet that we have, and I couldn't remember the title, The Cracks in the Edifice of Transgender Totalitarianism by Jane Robbins. Many of you have, have heard her speak at previous uh, conferences of ours, and uh, it's a valuable book on, on this. And it's available outside. Uh, Sarah is selling it outside. And I want to mention, I took the article before it was the booklet. I took the 27 pages to the governor. <coughs> and I said, I know this is 27 pages, but you've got to read it anyway. But you know what? None of the legislators really read the 27 pages, but they'll read this booklet, thanks to Jane. Okay.